43 through 48. St. Matthew 5, verses 43 through 48. And in my Bible, it's all in the red. So when it's in the red, that means who said it? Jesus, Jesus said it. St. Matthew 5, verses 43 through 48. It said, Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemies. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Woo, that's hard sometimes. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That ye may be children of the Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his, maketh his son to rise, that's S-U-N, not S-O-N, to rise on the evil and on the good and send it rain on the just and the, on the unjust. For if you love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. I'd like to hang my hat Amen. today on St. Matthew 5, verse, uh, verse 45, where it says that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. There was a hit R&B song released in August of 1985 by the group Lucians. And its ending chorus is, You can't stop the rain. <laughs> you can't stop the rain. <laughs> when it starts to fall, there's no one else to blame. There's no one else to blame. You can't stop the rain. For a few minutes on this Sunday, I'd like to share from the subject, look across the room and see everybody and see that your pastor might be in. Uh, even though I seen Barry Connell right now before it's over, yeah, I'm big in the day. Tell him, you can't stop the rain. You can't stop the rain. You can't stop the rain. I love that high note they hit. And then, uh, just as a little subject, they had old crazy Lamar singing that song about a week or two ago. You can't stop the rain. Okay, excuse me, I'm coming back already. All right, I'd like to share the message. Uh, I, I, in this text from the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is giving us a firsthand look at operating instructions, what operating instructions should be for any believer. Jesus in this text called believers into an uncomfortable call by saying in St. Matthew 5, verses 43 through 48, uh, the Message Bible has it another way. He said, you're familiar with the unwritten law, love your friend and its unwritten companion, hate your enemies. I'm challenging that. I'm telling you to love your enemies. Let them bring out the best in you, not the worst. When someone gives you a hard time, respond with the supple moves of prayer. For then you are working out of your true selves, your God created selves. This is what God does. He gives his best, the sun to warm and the rain to nourish to everyone, regardless, the good and the bad, the nice and the nasty. If you all, if you do, if all you do is love the lo lovable, do you expect a bonus? Anybody can do that. If you simply say hello to those who greet you, do you expect a medal? Any run of the meal center does that. In a word, what I'm saying is grow up your kingdom subjects. Now live like it. Live out your God created identity. Live generously and graciously towards others the way God lives towards you. Jesus got up and in all into all of our businesses by informing us that loving on people that are already lovable doesn't get us a prize. Jesus also lets us know that speaking to people that already speak to us doesn't get a trophy. I, I, I saw a guy in the shoe shine parlor and his, both of us was over six feet and over 200 some pounds and he was mean mugging me as bad as we know it and I mean mugged him and he didn't speak to me and I didn't speak to him. <laughs> he died. The last thing I did when I had a chance to speak to him 
was fall into that nonsense because right. he didn't speak to me. Right. I didn't speak to him. Yeah. I can never make that right on this side. Right. So, so folks, sometimes some of this stuff, we just got to go. let it go. Yeah. He taught us that we are to pray for our enemies. Yeah. In the Message Bible, this same text states that our enemies should bring out the best in us. Yeah. Verses 44 and 45 once again. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That ye may be children of your father which is in heaven. For when he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good. And sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. Well saints I desire to be a child of our heavenly father which is in heaven. So I will have to learn to love my enemies. I have to learn to bless them that curse me. I have to learn to do good to them that hate me. And I have to learn to pray for those who despitefully use and persecute me. Saints, all of these things sound good on a Sunday morning. But will this be our spirit at work on tomorrow? When that one person, that one person, everybody got one, who has the ability to pull our string, pulls that string real hard on a Monday morning. Will you remember this text? Will we speak in a tongue that the saints didn't know that we had? Saints, so many in this Christian walk desire to talk about our vertical relationships with God from up and down that we almost forget about the horizontal relationships that we are commanded to have with each other. My big mama told me once, boy, everyone won't like you. The flip side of that, saints, is that we, if we would be totally honest, our flesh has some people that it doesn't desire to like or love either. The amazing thing is because our flesh doesn't care for these people, we don't desire for God to love these people either. We want God to get them. We want God to move them. We want God to annihilate them while God always takes up the causes of those that are his. God's not going to get into the petty horizontal person to person squabbles that we have on a routine basis. Preach, Steve, it's getting good to me. I preach many motivational messages where I share, Can you stand to be blessed? When I'm asking about anyone being called to destiny, then you can just get the organ ready because everybody's ready to buck and shout. But the question of this hour is, can you stand to see your enemies and haters blessed? Wow, that's, that's a little different. All of us know how to huck him aside when God's going to do it. He's doing it now. He's doing it right now. We bucking. But can you stand to see your haters and your enemies blessed? So many of us desire to see the waters of our enemies cut off. But you can't stop to rain when it starts to fall on your enemies. God said in this text that he would cause it to rain on the just and the unjust. We think of that as just a bad thing, but many think that this text states that in every life some rain will fall. While that is true, I don't think that this is the point that the master was trying to convey in this text. The master also is letting us know that the just, which I hope would be an appropriate title for everyone here on today, saints, wouldn't be the only ones that the rain would fall on. The unjust would also have their turn with refreshing rains that bring on growth, nourishment, and blessings. Saints, if I would be totally honest, as a true holiness pre preacher, there are some folks that I desired and even almost prayed that God would stop their rain. <laughs> Lord, stop their rain. <laughs> Hold that thing up, Lord. Send a drought over to their address. Send a drought to their cell phone. Send a drought to their Facebook profile. But you got to think that that person also is going to feel 
is going to have a chance for the abundance of God. Saints, there's enough bitterness, hate, envy, and jealousy in the church of today that the carnal world could take a whole year off from drama and the church would gladly fill those shoes. I just said something. We're all talking about loving God whom we've never seen while we plot, scheme, and plan on those that we see every day. There will come a time, my brothers and sisters in Christ, that God will reign down a blessing on someone that you don't care for. So you just need to know that you can't stop playing. When it starts to fall, just because you don't like a person doesn't mean that God doesn't love them. Much of this text is Jesus' treaty against our own personal flesh. In St. Matthew 5, verse 46, Jesus said that even the publicans, who were the unjust tax collectors, can love those who love them. Jesus is calling us into a greater call where we have to love those who we truly loathe at times. Can your flesh stand to see your haters blessed? Everyone, good or bad, will have a season where good things might just rain like the color purple on top of their heads. God will send his S-U-N to rise on the evil and on the good and send rain on the just and the unjust. We all desire to make it in the glory, but we're carrying grudges and beefs with others. God could destroy every sinner, but he allows them to see sunshine and rain just like he allows us to see the same. God's love operates so much greater than our fleshy love does. Saints, today it's time to kill some beefs. You're not walking out of here with that thing against him, with that thing against her, with that thing against y'all. We got a, I heard something in the cemetery. We buried an uncle near somebody. And us not knowing, we don't know the history. When somebody, that grave's vacant by the person, we don't know. And now the husband wants the uncle to be dug up. Because he said that that uncle was the one molesting his wife. And as a business, we don't know nothing about that. So that's a hard position to be in. I, I, I got to admit that that's a very uncomfortable fit. But that's just something that we don't know. But that husband whose wife has passed on now for two years, it's time to let that go. Go. His wife can't even battle that fight, but he's carrying on the fight even after she's gone. Saints, and we want to, we carry beefs and grudges too long. God could destroy every sinner, but he allows them to see sunshine and rain just like the just. God's love operates so much greater than our fleshy love. Yes, it's time to kill some beef. It's time to stop some grudges. It's stop, time to stop retaliating against some others. Yeah. Folks, vengeance belongs to God because he has the patent on vengeance. Yeah. The apostle Paul wrote in Romans 12, verse 19, Paul writing, he said, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, said the Lord. Saints, God will get those who have it coming. I'm going to say it one more time. Saints, God will get those who have it coming. Our job unto them is to pray for those who oppose us and even hate us. We need to operate in the same forgiving love that our Heavenly Father operates in. Don't you desire to resemble your Father in heaven? I remember the late Bishop G.E. Patterson who once said, one of the greatest deliverances that you can ever receive is a deliverance from people. Uh, that's a word. Somebody ought to clap on that one right there. Uh, we want our healing. We want our deliverance from the enemies. But sometimes you need your deliverance from Mark. You need your de deliverance from Tanya. You need your deliverance from Willie Mae from many years back. But saints, I want to be a child of, uh, I want to be a child of my father in heaven. It's my desire to directly resemble my heavenly father. I hope that that's your desire also. Yeah. Jesus is calling us to stretch us and love, pray, 
and embrace good coming to those who we can absolutely not stand. Take a breath, saints, and picture that person that you're beefing with, and I sure hope it ain't me, and won't forgive for what they did to you. Then I want you to think about all the things that you've done, and God's willing to forgive us all. In the body of Christ, we pick and choose our spots. We pray for refreshments and forgiveness for ourselves. Then we desire to send many others to hell uh, uh, quick on the next flight. My brothers and sisters in Christ, if you can only salute your besties, your roadies, and your homies, then you're no bitty than the dirty, sneaky tax collectors. St. Matthew 5, verse 46, that be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. This verse is calling us to be at perfect, which means mature and complete as our Father which is in heaven is. Saints, we're not mature and complete because we're so caught up with those who we don't like. Yeah. On social media, so many troll the pages of those who they don't care for. Yeah. Saints, these beef with some are exceptionally deep-seated. Some of us on the verge of missing heaven itself because we're so intent on getting this one or getting that one back. Saints, on this side of glory, we had better learn how to love others because God's heaven won't be full of those leaves of loser leave town matches man that we used to see in the Mid-South Coliseum Saints moved out spot might have made it into heaven but he won't be hitting anyone with a bone uh, with Jerry Lawler and Bill Dundee if they make it on in then they won't be drop kidding, kicking or setting anyone on fire if Tojo Yamamoto made it into heaven's gates then he won't be chopping on anyone saints we have to learn to love those who use us love those who taunt us love those who tease us and love those who lie on us. God causes his son to rise on the evil and on the good and he sent it rain on the just and the unjust. Saints they might not be just in your eyes but you can't stop the rain once it starts to fall. Saints I think much of our emotional stability is challenged in those seasons when we see God's good rains pouring on our enemies. Now we love to see our enemies in a tough season. Listen to this. Now we love to see our enemies in a tough season where they lose a home, lose a car, or suffer a divorce. But can your flesh take seeing them elevated? Can your flesh stand to see them promoted? Can your flesh stand to see them blessed? Acts 10 verse 34 states in the King James Version, and I'm killing the devil on today, whether y'all with me or not. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. I like Acts 10 34 from the NIV. It says it's better. It states this, that then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism. Saints, we have a God that doesn't fall to our big eyes and our little use. Our God isn't impressed with any of our flesh. Our God's love makes him quite impartial. Even the unjust will see providential rains and blessed rays of sunshine. Saints, it's time to love like our master love. Here we are praying to see someone's water cut off when God could have already cut off our waters a long time ago. Saints, don't you try to stop the blessings of your enemies. You can't stop the rain when it starts to fall. We're told in Psalm 37, verses 1 through 4, another writer wrote, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither like the green herb. 
trust in the Lord and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Saints unto God cuts the workers of iniquities down. Our job is to love them and pray for them. Can I get an amen? amen. Then we have to check our own hearts. Because everyone that we don't like is a worker of iniquity. Woo! There I go. I told you I was going to cut you before it's over. We have to learn to check our own emotions. We need to check our own hearts. We need to check our own spirits. And check our own flesh. Jealousy, envy, bitterness, and forgiveness have us feeling oaths against some people. Saints, God is calling us to rise higher. Yeah. Stop trying to cut off folks' water. Yeah. You can't stop the rain when it starts to fall. Yeah. There will be that person at work that is messy, and they get promoted, and you don't. There'll be that sister on your block that's dressed to the nines and you're struggling to make it. Yeah. There'll be that pastor that's not living a single thing and his church is extremely blessed yeah. while some struggle. Yeah. Saints, you can't stop the rain once it starts to fall. Can you love when you're overlooked? Yeah. I'm going to ask you again. Can you love when you're overlooked? Yeah. Can you stand to see everyone else blessed? Yeah. Can you stop looking for fairness, which we never were promised by Scripture? Yeah. All that God has promised is that he would be faithful. Yeah. So we all live, will live through many unfair days. Yeah. But we shouldn't ever see a faithless day. Saints, many times the only thing that keeps our mind, as the psalmist David says, David said that I've been young and now I'm old. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Saints, you can't stop the rain, even if when it starts to fall on the head of your enemies. Saints, just keep on loving. Saints, just keep on praying. Saints just keep on waiting for the promises of God. Some scores aren't for you to settle. God has reserved some of your scores to settle. Saints, they did you wrong. Let it go and let God have it. Let God handle the how, when, and where of their payback. Today, my brothers and sisters in Christ, is our day to finally let those folks go. Today is the day that we need to let all the hate go. We're going to glory early many times because we can't let some people go. You guys, you can't let John go. And John been gone for 37 years. And you got high blood pressure still mad about what John did. You going by Mason's and by John's old cologne. And John, four wives up from you. Saints of God, I'm telling you all today that we got to let some folks go. There's some experiences and things that happen in our past that we got to move ourselves away from. You can't stop the rain once it starts to fall. Saints, there will be times that you know that they did you dirty and played you foul. And, and I can see you right now. I can see Sister Melanie back in the day when she put that grease on her face and said, I'm a female. I'm going to get you. Uh, that was a whole day, wasn't it? Did I, I, I ain't getting no bit like that, Melanie. Oh, come on. Well, Tammy was like, oh, we just love the people of the world. But Sister Dale, right. yeah. quiet, right. <laughs> quiet don't mean uh, yeah. <laughs> that she be ran over. Yeah. We're commanded to love these folks anyway. Stop praying for God to kill your co-workers. Right. Right. Oh. Stop praying that God will kill that lady at work that you don't like. Saints, you can't stop the rain when it starts to fall. Our job is to know that wonderful rains will one day come to us all. As hard as it is to believe when you're caught up in a trial. I once said in a message that the enemy's great gift is that he can make your greatest struggles to come at a time when everyone else seems to be living in a land with no struggles. Job 14 and 1 said that man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. That exempts no one. 
We all see trouble in these earth suits or this flesh. You're not the only one going through. But I promise you the enemy will make it seem that everybody else is sailing, uh, take me away, and it's easy like Sunday morning, and everybody else seeming to be, to be living carefree when you're going through one of the greatest fights of your life. But I'm telling you this, that you're not the only one going through. Some of your enemies look like they are prospering and are fighting the battles of their lives even now. Stop trying to stop the rains that would bless the heads of your enemy. One day soon, God's going to reward those who walk like him. God's going to reward those who love like him. God's going to reward those who live like him. Saints reign in the scripture means fertility, cleansing, calmness, growth, and even rebirth. Why would you ever desire to stop this kind of rain from coming to someone else's life? Could the hate be that strong. It's is that a godly thing, or have you allowed your flesh to have its way? We have people in our own family tree at times that desire us to stop our reign. I said it, I called it one time, I was speaking at my mom's service, you know, because my mom was the peaceful sister. To keep everybody together, she took the back seat. So we became Helen's kids. You know, because, you know, my mom take the back seat and everything as if we were less than. But I'm telling you that there are some people here that you got some problems even when you go to a family reunion. You got some problems when all of y'all got the same lips, same hips, some same torsos and everything else. That there's always somebody in the family that we fight so many battles in the family. I, if the Bible says that your foes will be those of your own household. You don't need to find nobody in the street. Sometimes you'll have some of your greatest fight right at Big Mama's house. Saints of God. I come from a family, brother here. A family of hot heads. That sometimes when we meet, we've been together for an hour and ain't been no fight. Nobody said nothing to son, nobody's child. We said it's good and we go on home before somebody said something. And then all of a sudden, we got the WWE with all these preachers, all these prophets, all these evangelists, all in the family. Saints of God, I'm telling you, we got to stop trying to stop other folks' rain. You don't want your rain stopped. to the 
and of him that taken away not good, ask them not again, and as she would, that men should do to you, do you also to them likewise, for if you love them, which love you, what thanks have you, for sinners also love those that love them, saints of God, look that round here, talking about your holiness church, Don't like them. You look at me. Should cost his brother.